I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to R&B Showcase, the show that takes you over, under, and through the decades. We got some special guests in the house tonight, but before we introduce our very special guest, we're going to introduce our co-host of the show. Joining me now from 106.5 FM from the heart and soul of Philadelphia is Mr. Julian Seward. Tell us about your show, Julian. Man, first and foremost, it's good to be back, but uh, my show is my bittersweet philosophy. And like I always say, it's like a bit of my mentality placed to a playlist. So, <laughs> And we got the music historian. He knows all the facts, the figures, the times, the dates, the places, and the locations. Mr. Kevin White is joining us. Mr. Tim Marshall, how you doing? Good to have you with us, Kev. Absolutely. You ready to do this thing? I'm ready. Let's do this thing. I'm excited about it. And, and we've got a great group coming on right now. Our special guests are five brothers that are keeping vocal group sound and style alive. Having been once signed to Bad Boy Records and the iconic Motown Records with hit singles like <laughs> All I Do and You Got Me. We're going to welcome to the R&B Showcase B. Five, give it up for the hey, fellas. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, man? How are you? Welcome to the show. Good. And before we get started, we want to say to you, five brothers, to thank you, thank you, and thank you. Because I grew up with the sound <laughs> of the Temptations, the Four Tops, the Gladys Knight, and and the Woo. Supremes, and uh, so many yeah. of those spinners, and so many of those great vocal groups from back in the day. And the um, legends. And then after that, you know, Boys to Men were also signed to Motown. Ninety Eight Degrees was sound signed to Motown. And then, yes. and then the vocal group started to kind of fizzle out a little bit. But you guys mm-hmm. are still on the scene, and you're bringing that sound back. You're bringing that style and that class back. And we want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you, because we're all fans of vocal groups. Right, fellas? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot to us. Man, it's, it's much needed, and we're glad that you're doing what you're doing. And we look forward to seeing Thanks. you guys out on the road and everything. But... Um, Thank why why don't we go around and let you guys introduce yourselves personally, individually uh, to our audience? I guess we'll start off with me. Uh, I'm the oldest uh, out of the group. My name is Dustin. What's up? Uh, I'm Kelly. I'm the second oldest out of the group. What's up, guys? I'm Patrick. I am the third oldest middle child. <laughs> I'm the middle child. Hey, uh, <laughs> my name is Carnell. I'm the fourth. So, yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm Brian and I'm the youngest. We kind of introduce ourselves as numbers because we're brothers. So we just kind of go down, you know, the ladder. We got a kinda system. Funny. Oh After that in forever. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> that just came out, honestly. I'm new child. <laughs> you know how to come at it. I was like, okay, I guess from old memory. Yeah. Speaking of being brothers, there's another famous vocal group that came out of Motown. Who would known, that as, be? known as the Jackson Five. Yeah. So yeah. you guys are known as B five. So how did this come about? B five. Uh man. I mean, honestly, the name kind of came a little bit from the Jackson Five. Um, honestly, um, at first it was four members. Um, just me, Dustin, Kelly, and Carnell. At the time, Brian was um just uh too too little at the time when we were doing an, another group called the TNT Boys. Um, but, um, once we kind of started doing some showcases and we kind of met some people, um, we kind of was like, you know what, you know, I think we should bring Brian into the group. And, um, once we all agreed upon it, people kept calling us like, yo, you guys remind us of the Jacksons, the Jackson five, you know, um, J five. So, um, on our way back to, cause at the time we all used to live in Florida, we were trying to throw names around and we kind of like, you know what? People keep saying we resemble that. And because our last name um, is breeding. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people knew that, but our last name is breeding. So we was like, okay, breeding five seems too long, mm-hmm. but B five, once, uh, our manager at the time said it, it kind of just like rang in our ears and we was all like, yo, that's it right there. So you have a very mm-hmm. similar story of the Jackson five. Uh, did you see their miniseries J five miniseries? Jackson five had one out some years ago. But you guys we saw the movie, the movie. The movie. Uh, American Dream. Movie incredible. American Dream, yeah. I don't know about the series. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. the, that's a movie. That's the same. Yeah, the movie. American Dream. Oh, Dark. American yeah. Dream. Yeah. Yeah. It was a series, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. Yeah. But you got, you know, the, the, the story is similar because, you know, Michael wasn't in the group in the beginning. And then they added him to the group. They started as three and then it became four. And then they added, then they added uh, Michael to the group. So similar mm-hmm. story mm-hmm. with the guys, you know? So yeah. That's, that's really yeah, great. yeah. That is similar. I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. But. Crazy. Yeah, that, yeah. So I know the Jacksons influenced you. Who are some of the other groups that influenced you to, you know, to get in the show business? Who inspired you to get into this business? <clears throat> um, well, I know as we were growing up, like our inspirations that we were looking at were like, we, 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 
I think I was pretty vague. Like we would go from like R and B to pop side, like any groups. Like as far as the R and B side, we were looking up to like um one twelve. New edition, one twelve, um Jagged um, Edge. Yeah. Yeah, Jagged Edge at the time. The um new kids on the block to yeah, and then, Backstreet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sync, Backstreet, New Kids on the Block, things like that, yeah. Yeah, it would vary because our mo- our mother, she would play um, all types of music. So we was very versed as far as like the scale of, uh, you know, R&B to pop to, you know, things in between. So and mm-hmm. at the time growing up, um, the music industry was really popping in Orlando at the time. So that's mm-hmm. when you had all yeah. of, like those NSYNC, those mm-hmm. Backstreets mm-hmm. and uh, all of those groups. So when we were at that time, we were kids going to like, you know, the Millennium Tour like oh my gosh man we could do something like that so you know it it, it would be a a variation of of all the groups and we even looked at groups like back in the day we watched like the old movies of um um the five heartbeats you know what i mean robert pounds like we watched everything i'm thinking about the people that you're saying that you're influenced by and i'm thinking about the image i remember when you guys broke on the scene like the signature black and white letterman jackets and you know, it was definitely uh, its own kind of look. Mm-hmm. How much input did you guys have into like the styling of yourselves? And was it close to who you guys really were? Or is it kind of set apart from draft um, image was reality? I would say in the beginning, um, we were we were we didn't really have so much say so on on our style and everything like that. Our labels and, and uh, we had stylists that were very hands on when it came down to like what we were going to wear for the music videos and things like that. Um, as we grew older in our uh you know just profession we started you know taking more of the control you know with our with our later videos yeah you know so we style ourselves and everything now but uh in the beginning though it was it was all ran through the label but to answer your question too um you you said um did, did, did it match our our like what we thought or what we wanted and i would say the answer to that is yeah because even though um like we had a dope stylist on the bad boy her name was kiki and um she was our stylist but honestly when you're a good stylist the stylist knows you and would know how to you know what i mean style you and yeah. without necessarily having to verify everything back and forth with you so it, it really made it easy for us she knew us our style what we liked and everything that she always brought us was like really dope and fire so we liked it, it was so. it was a good relationship yeah i'd say b5 first came on my radar when my son was little and we used to listen to radio disney in the car yeah. all oh. the time <laughs> and that's kind of where i first started to hear you guys's music and mm-hmm. my question to you guys is how did you kind of get involved in that whole Disney ecosystem. Now I heard you just mention Orlando a moment ago. Maybe that was part of it because I know that a lot of the songs that we listen to on radio Disney usually had some kind of Disney connection, whether, you know, the artists mm-hmm. were, you mm-hmm. know, like the cheetah girls we're, or something like that, or whether it right. was, um, you know, some way related. So I was just wondering, how did you guys get involved in that ecosystem? Well, honestly, that's on. That's one of the crazy things about it that we actually weren't signed to Disney or Hollywood Records at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as we came out um, with "All I Do" and the self-titled titled album in uh, two thousand and five, um, I would say that Disney um, reached out to our manager. At the time, I think in two thousand was it two thousand was it like two thousand and five or like two thousand? It, it would have been the early two thousands, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was around that time, and they and they just saw us, and, and they were so enamored with us. They actually was like, "Hey, I'm going to show you guys something. Um, come down to the offices or whatever." And they showed us actually a clip of High School Musical that they were um, filming. Okay, but it wasn't like it wasn't like done. It was still like in its like beta stage, and um, we actually started working with them and created a wonderful relationship, and ended up doing the um, lead song "Get Your Head in the Game." which followed with uh, a slew of other records like um <laughs> like redoing big Bad Wolf, redoing um shining star and a bunch of mm-hmm. other stuff they Emperor's Less they, and the up yeah Emperor, yeah we got on emperor's new groove soundtrack and they started just putting us on a even some of our own records i think at the time we had like seven or eight songs on the radio on the radio disney right yeah and mind you we weren't even signed right um so it was actually a record like it was a record that yeah did. yeah and it felt and it, and it kind of felt like a, it felt like we were signed to two at the time but um <laughs> the funny thing is they actually did want to take us um from bad boy and sign us to hollywood records and they already had a tv show ready to go like this whole 
they had a whole rollout, but um, you know, Bad Boy and them couldn't get the business done. So they actually ended up giving a TV show to, on that that they had created specifically for us. You know, right, right, right behind us. You know, came the Jonas Brothers. Oh wow! wow. I never wow. knew that. Yeah, yeah. So that whole TV show that they got, you right. know, was actually, I mean, the Jonas Brothers used to um, tour with us all the mm-hmm. time, and like you know, we was you know we used to see see each other a lot. And um, but again, that's beside the point. But yeah, that that whole situation was kind of like tailor made for B five. Um, but I think um, the business with Bad Boy, I think they were wanting too much money or something. I can't remember right. the details. We don't really but, know. Right. Yeah, really it know. was. But yeah, like it was. That's kind of how we got connected with them. And we, again, we never were signed to them to this day. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Mm, yeah. yeah. And we used to do like, you know, Radio Disney tours mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. with us and Jesse McCartney. Right. And, a slew of other people and like you know we was low we was low-key and we actually had two different types of shows we had like a bad boy you know dream <laughs> tour show mm-hmm. we had a radio yeah, Disney Disney show. Show. So, yeah so it was kind of funny because different. like we had this b5 you know the bat like patrick said bad boy and, mm-hmm. and it's not i won't say raunchy because it wasn't raunchy but like mm-hmm. you know it, it was it's like more, uh, the culture you know right, yeah, the culture right, right, and then right, and then right. and then on the whole other side we have this like very you know very uh I guess uh, crossover, sure. crossover kid friendly appeal. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, it's funny you so. mentioned some of those names. I can remember listening to all those artists mm-hmm. in the car. Yeah, my son. <laughs> yeah that's great. That's yeah, great. but that's how that yeah. came about, man. They reached out and we just we just started rolling with it. Which honestly, looking back at it, I think like that was great um, marketing and promotion for us because mm-hmm. given the fact that we're both like we're black and white, we're mixed race, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the fact that, you know, we're, we're over there doing the, the bad boy stuff and then crossing over to Disney. It, it, it actually made perfect sense to me. Yeah, so, yeah. You had the best of both it. worlds going on there. You know, you had yeah. that audience and the other audience and yeah, you can make it all work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, I mean, Disney Mania, the Hannah Montana soundtrack, oh. the highest. Can be, I mean, we wow. it, was, it was a lot of great stuff happening. It's a Disney. moment in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. It's great that you have that versatility to be able to do different types of work with different types of audiences. That's a that's a great asset to you as a group. But uh, it was wonderful, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Even I even outside of the Disney thing, we actually when we were doing the Scream tour in two thousand and what what year was that, you guys? I don't know, bro. You keep uh, asking years. I'm not going to give you the problem. Right. <laughs> it was well, just, he, he brought up versatility, and I was like, mm-hmm. when we did the Scream tour, we were also doing another um, mall tour called the Teen People magazine rock and shop mall tour Mm -hmm. and like those shows like i'm talking about back in back in the day if you can remember if someone had a signing or a show like like the floor second third levels everything was like Mm jam-packed and we had like all ethnicities there you had white you had black Mm -hmm. spanish um Asian. asian you know like it was it was so so versatile yeah it was great we were and talking, we loved it, yeah. We were talking about how loyal your fan base is and especially how vocal and involved they were at that time. And the first, actually the first concert I ever went to, shout out to my sister, it was her birthday, was a Scream tour. I think it's like oh. a year or two before, this was when like IMX just changed their names and from the yeah. tour. And mm. I'm thinking just how like that era of fandom was. Like you guys mm-hmm. were all around the same age. So, you know, at the time you guys were teens or preteens. Mm-hmm. What? Was there anything that prepared you for that amount of, I guess, fame, for lack of a better term, or that amount of just notoriety, or is was it just coming as it happened for you? Yeah, I think it was just coming as it happened for you. And I don't think, like, in our position, like, it's something you can really pre- prepare for other than what we was already doing as far as, like, shows and things like that. But as far as, like, that wave of just, like, fandom, pandemonium and, like, yeah. the crazy fan base that we had, like, I don't think anybody could, like, prepare for it the only thing you can do is like kind of hope for the best with stuff like that <laughs> right the wave yeah. yeah yeah i mean there, there is there is like a moment where um where you know you know the world doesn't really know of you and then you do you know one performance on you know a scream tour or a 106 in park and all of a sudden everyone knows who you are and it yeah. feels like an overnight thing yeah um <clears throat> like but yeah, other than that, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's I would say like I would agree with Dustin. It's it's more so of like a thing where you just feel like it's just it's just you know steady, constantly coming in, and you know you kind of get used to it over time because you're constantly doing different performances. But you know as you grow, the stages scale, and it just becomes a better experience. Did it make you look at people differently, seeing how people reacted to you? Well, I'll say like even when I used to go like 
grocery shopping or something at Walmart. Like it was weird when people started recognizing me off the stage because, mm -hmm. you know, we have, you know, we lived in Canton, Georgia at the time and everybody in our city like knew who we were in our schools. And so it got to this point to where like, it just gradually happened, but it became so often that, you know, you just have to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. Were you talking about your interaction with fans? What was your experience like on that Rito Disney tour on that tour? As far as the Are fans, you talking as far about as the, the fans, uh, the time where the, the mall got shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> oh, man. So we basically had experience. a performance. I forgot the name of the tour, but we were basically doing a performance, mm -hmm. and we saw the security, and they had these little flimsy barricades, mm -hmm. and we were. Uh, I remember our management saying, "Like, hey, we're going to need more security. Like, mm -hmm. B five fans are not the same as other Radio Disney artists." And they're like, "No, it's fine. We just had Jesse McCartney. You know, this is fine." <laughs> and like, they didn't even have like men as like security. It was just these nice little, you know, Radio Disney women. <laughs> but um, it was we couldn't even get to the first song. I think we were performing "You Got Me" and. We sometimes girls have gotten on stage, but we kind of know if that happens once or twice, mm -hmm. like afterwards, it's going to be like pandemonium because we're dancing. A girl comes up on stage. She hugs us. And we're like, okay, cool. Security runs on, takes her off. But at one point, Another they one. all just broke through. Mm -hmm. And Another all of a sudden, one. we're just <laughs> in a sea of people. And it was the craziest experience we ever had because... Um, in the mall, there was like giant bases with like palm trees. All those got knocked over. I think over 20 something <laughs> count police counties had to show up. Whoa. And yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was all crazy over the because it was crazy because mm -hmm. before every show, you know, me and my brothers, we do a prayer. And for that particular show, we prayed and we're like, hey, you know, let's just let this just be like our craziest show ever. Mm -hmm. Let this be chaotic. <laughs> you know, let this just be a whole vibe. And after yeah. that, we were like, yeah, we're yeah. never doing that again. <laughs> the Lord do answer prayers, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean they answered it like that. And, the, and to add on to that, um, I think one of the biggest mistakes, guys, was like they had the show like in the middle. Yeah. Like, you know, normally, like have, like, like, normally, normally, like, I mean, not to show the stage. They had the stage like in the middle of like the mall so like like normally you have a like you push it and you push it up against the wall so like there's some backing so you can either right. go left or right mm. but when we went on the stage they circled us 360. Mm. so we weren't so like even when the show shut down we weren't able to go anywhere and then after yeah. that like brian said one two five ten and next you know the whole thing is like like i remember we had some of our people who were doing um merchandise my uncle was there and he was literally had his, his legs on the stage with his back against the barricade, like, oh, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, and then I, I know it just, boom, it just, it just, it just, like, quote unquote, hell broke loose. You know what I mean? It was, it was wild. No, it, was, it was a wild experience. Mm -hmm. Literally. They had helicopters flying around. Wow. They took it off like it was out a of crime city. scene. It was crazy. People man. were getting hit with bean bags. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Quite a show, huh? <laughs> it, was yeah. it, was, it was quite a show, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys find more fulfilling? That journey to kind of get to the top or kind of what you're doing now to kind of maintain um, your careers <laughs> so far down the road? Well, I feel like we're still actually got room. I still like, even, even though we've been out as long as we have, we still have um, a lot of room to grow and see what our potential peak is versus like a lot of other artists that's been now like, you know, you got your Chris Browns, you got mm -hmm. your, you know, your major artists out mm -hmm. that's now, but it's like, we kind of know where they're, where they're at, you know what I mean? Where they're mm -hmm. peaked at and we know there's, you know what I mean? I but with you. us, I feel like um, we still have all that room to grow. So we're in a stage of, of growing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that, that's how I feel about it. I'm, I think it's a good space to be in mm -hmm. because, um, again, like, even though we've been out for a while, we still have a lot of room to grow in this thing. And we're, and that's where we're at versus like just maintaining. Cause yeah, we maintained over the years, but what we ultimately want to do is reach a higher fan base and expand in, and all those types of things. I love that. Yeah. No complacency. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and even like even though we've been signed to major labels um, like Bad Boy and Motown, it's always really been our core team with just like with just us and management that really has been maintaining. So because we're independent today, I feel like the maintaining is a part of the journey. Like I don't really mm -hmm. see them as um, separate. Mm -hmm. You right, mentioned, yeah. with Beavers and with the Chris Brown, when you're signed to like right. Jive Breakers, RCA, you know they have a magic button they push. 
and you know their artists can be everywhere and explode everywhere and that's the difference between i think what b5 journey has looked like compared to the beavers the chris browns right the um jonas brothers an underdog journey but to answer that question more direct as well personally i was i think when i was younger i was so fixated on reaching that actual place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've learned to enjoy the journey along the way right, and like, right. you know, um, celebrate the small wins along the way. I feel like those are equally as important because you meet so many different people and there's, and there's so much evolution that you go through, you know what I mean? Trying to reach that place. And sometimes when you're just so fixated on like the destination, you kind of get hazed, you know, with everything else. So with I think the journey, um, yeah, you don't appreciate the journey in right. it. Yeah. yeah. So I always say like, it's, it's very important to stop quote unquote and smell the rose and the flowers and just see where you're at. Like, you know, the landscape you're at and see how far you've come. So you can appreciate yourself, your, your, your team and the fans that, that have been there with you since the beginning. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And like all of you have been in a very unique position to be at a very young age and straddle that fence of CD era and digital era. Like yeah. along the way, what kind of two parts, what wisdom would you might give to someone who may be in that position as well, uh, an older artist or an artist from that era that might be struggling with that transition to move into this era and maybe even some gems for a current artist that could gain some mm -hmm. of the game that you had from being in that previous era. You know, a lot of that uh, doesn't go away. You know, a lot of that can be utilized today. I would say like as far as to older artists that's trying to like break out uh you have to adapt the new mind the new uh mindset of like what the what the kids are doing these days and how they're using social media and TikTok and you know things of like that uh to get their content out it, as far like the old school major label way it, like patrick said it's like you know it's a push button but that at the same time is kind of a dying uh mm -hmm. like a dying you know what i mean old dying um what's the word i'm looking for mm -hmm. It's just an old dying, the like system, a, uh, the system, has yeah, old dying system. That's, 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 yeah, yeah, it's just and not so, there anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, so with with that, like, you just have to really, really be, um, be conscious and be aware and willing to make that change from like if you are accustomed to moving how you know it was back in the day. You got to basically re program your brain to adapt to what's going on now with how the new artists are going out and putting things out and just go with that flow. And you'll probably have your uh, chances of being successful or be a lot higher that way. Right. And I'll, I would say to um, like, maybe for the artists that are, are coming out today. Um, one thing that I think that older artists did have a really good grasp on was um, gaining your fan base, like in, in a in a grassroots type of way mm -hmm. um because i think that is still very effective although mm -hmm. today everything is very digital and online um if you can touch somebody physically in person and build a fan base that way like i think that will uh carry you pretty far mm -hmm. yeah yeah followers and fans are two totally different things. Right, right. Well, right. You know? very good, yes. And um, and mm -hmm. I, I like that what Kelly just said, and if I could just add like a tiny tidbit on there, I would say for the new artists, because of everything is so like at our fingertips now versus back in the day, you had to go to a, a big studio with the big room and all that stuff. Now you can do everything yourself mm -hmm. in your own room. So I would say um, that I would say for the new artists, to adapt what it was done back in the day was to focus more on like you know quality sometimes mm -hmm. um and, and focus on your craft a little more and sometimes like it's okay to put stuff out quick but sometimes like you know work on yourself a little more so that you can make sure that you have like a like we used to say like a classic smash you know a song that right. a song that will play on the radio forever mm -hmm. type stuff i would say that now tell us about your current projects that you have out now Oh man, we're very excited Woo! about the current stuff. That's that's the most thing we've been excited about since I could say like we put out our first album. So right now we got a new <laughs> single that we're dropping. It's gonna uh, drop on the twenty seventh, the same day that we're doing the uh, show in New York City at the okay. Harbor. Mm -hmm. um, so we're dropping baby. the yeah, we're dropping the single. It's called "Give It Back." Okay. So um, that'll be out available on. Um, iTunes, Spotify, all your platforms. So um, we want to encourage everybody to definitely go download that um, and check it out. Let us know your thoughts on it. And if you're you're at the radio, radio station, produced. Yes. hold on, don't go past. Hold on, hold on. That's was written and produced by by who now? Oh yeah, it was written and produced by your boys only. B five, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. And, nicely done. And, this, and this is another thing. Like 
this is another thing um yes. since patrick touched on that like mm-hmm. man just even the fact that like we've been what people don't realize is we, our ears kind of crazy like as far as like music like we gotta i i would like to say we got a really good ear for music. Pop, 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 pop your collar, player. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but just to be like from growing from growing up in the studios, being around the greatest producers in the world, like Rodney Jerk and mm-hmm. Scott Storch, mm-hmm. uh, Ryan Leslie, Will Timberland, Underdog, Baby, like, like, yeah. Baby Diane Baby. Warren, oh, Diane wow. Warren. Like, so awesome. we've been around all these greats and been able to like, basically every time we're in there we're picking up knowledge and, and keys and every time we're in the studio seeing how these different people taking work. notes yeah so i yeah and over the years i've obviously we've naturally applied it to ourselves as you know we've started writing picking up the pen and writing and patrick producing records and things like that so you know um i think we're at a really good point in place with music to where like people will really like gravitate to what we're doing because of all the experience of, that we've had with writing like I'm just excited about it, as you can see. Yeah, we're very yeah, excited. Yeah. Not, not only that, but we also have like our in-house production, our in-house like videographer. Like the last two music videos we did, which was Do That and Wave. Those yep. two records we produce, you know, executive produce our own music videos as well. So really we're kind of becoming like our own record label like, in a sense okay. because nice. we have everything in house. We're really excited about this new direction. Well, that's fun. Exactly. Yeah. So June 27th, that new single, Give It Back, comes out, mm-hmm. written and produced by B5 mm-hmm. exclusively. We also like to have the show June 27th in New York City. That's basically okay. sold out. So we're very excited to be back in New York to see our fans there. Mm-hmm. And we also have a winery tour in September that we're doing. So, you know, the ball is, is the snowball effect is getting bigger and bigger every time we, you know, talk to our team and it's all independent. So we can't be just, we can't be more excited about it. The fans on social media um, who've been responding to us have been like phenomenal. And that gives us yeah. so much, you know, drive. The engagement has been very high. Everything. Yeah, has man. Been- so like, to, so again, to do all of this stuff without, you know, um, and not, and not to say it's a bad thing, but, you know, to do this stuff, because I'm just saying from a place where when you we were assigned to Motown or when we were assigned to Bad Boy, to see this type of engagement on our own, mm-hmm. yeah, it just gives us so much like, you know, like that oomph, that energy to be like, man, you know, guys, we actually we do have the knowledge. We do have the the means to actually take this thing to the next level within our inner core team. So right. we got all this. So like just everything I, I announced, plus stuff coming Towards the end of the year, leading into 2025, there's going to be a lot of B5 um, announcements. Updates. Announcements, <laughs> you know. So yeah. Well, we're excited about it. We're looking forward to seeing you, gentlemen, on tour, and we're going to actually be at the New York City show. We're coming to that, and then the City Winery, gentlemen, that's right around the corner from the radio yes. station in yep. Philadelphia. So we're going to come out, check you out at that show as well. Yes. We're looking forward to Please seeing do. you. Please do. We'd love to have you, man. Now you guys going to do all I do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that is one of my favorite songs. That that we're song gonna, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna do all the yes. classics, man. Yes, yeah. all Look forward to all that. I do is a classic, and it's definitely one of our favorites to perform, uh, to perform still after all these years. So you know, the fans the fans won't leave the room if we don't do that song. Yeah, we have, we have to do it. <laughs> so, we're, we're looking forward to. We want to thank you, Gemma, for taking the time out of your busy schedule of touring and recording and and preparation and coming on the show here today on the R and B showcase. Let's give the Gentlemen, a round of applause, B5. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so Dustin, much. Kelly, Patrick, Cornell, and Brian. B5 is in the house. Yeah. Yes. Thank yes. you, guys. Thank you so thank much. You, you guys, guys were so great. So we want to, want to thank you guys, and we, you know, we look forward to seeing you on the road. Uh-huh. Yes, and also I want to add, let's not um, wait too long to do this again. Let's do another one of these, and maybe we can come back to Philadelphia do something special for um, the station. Ooh, that would be awesome. Oh, that'd be awesome. Let's make that happen. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do Circle it. with our team. Circle yes, back man. with our team, and we'll make yeah. sure that it gets done. Oh, yeah. Shout out to your management staff and your, and your entire team, too. I want to thank you guys for you know, Absolutely. coming on and taking time thank out of your you. day. Thank you. So. This, has been, this has been phenomenal, really. Thank you to our co-host, uh, Mr. Julian Seward. Always a pleasure. Always and, a pleasure. And uh, Kevin White. It's been fun, man. Our producer, Mr. Kyle Mack. And uh, let's one more time give it up for B5. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank I'm you. Tim Marshall, and thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase. Thank you.